go. Need to move this around a bit. I've got stuff everywhere. I wish you could see. I wish you could see my table in front of me here. I really can you hear the clunks. I really do need to have another clear up. It's amazing. As fast as I turn my back, everything needs clearing up. So, mm. so good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my studio. This is Emma on a lovely sort of wettish September morning. It's a bit of a grey morning here. I've just been out and done my shopping. It's very exciting, isn't it? Monday morning, I go out and I do my shopping in town and get that done. And that kind of kickstarts my week. It's really quite, it's a mindless sort of activity and I quite like that because it's a sort of procrastination, but it has a purpose. I actually do go get the food to feed the family, which you know, it's a good idea, isn't it, really? Can't be down here just lolling around playing with fabrics all the time. Nice, though, that would be. So, thank you for watching the first two weeks, if you've been here. Welcome if you've just started watching me. Uh, the last two videos were looking at what I do to get myself going when I don't quite know what I'm going to be doing next. Uh, and it involved a bit of sketching last week. And this week, I'm going to show you how I do the stitching of the sample that I created. I'm going to give you a little quick flash. It's actually in a book. It's actually finished and in a book, in my sketchy book. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So I hope you're going to enjoy that little bit as well. Obviously, I took my my three or four fabrics I think I had in the end. I kept it really, really tightly focused. Um, and although I was tempted to do a lot more stitching into it, I tried again, just I try and keep it really fast and so you're responding quickly to something before your head takes over and starts saying, oh, you could do this and you could do that. Because I do believe you could do a million things with whatever you're creating. You know, the, the sky is the limit. And once you start the ball rolling by getting your fabrics and your threads out, it's something that kind of takes you over in a way. And then it's about choosing. And knowing when to stop is as important as knowing that you've got to get going. <laughs> a bit like life in the morning. If you didn't get out of bed in the first place, and do anything, um, uh, nothing would happen. It's the same sort of principle, I suppose. So next week, I'm not quite sure, again, what I'm going to be doing. I, I'm kind of doing a bit of week to week at the moment. I've got a few things kicking off. I've got people asking me for doing Zoom talks and things, so I'm trying to get my head around that. I've also been asked to do a very exciting thing, um, which is a workshop for WOW Books. If you haven't heard of WOW Books, they're, they're, they do workshops online and they have beautiful printed books as well. Perhaps I'll show you them next week. I've got a couple in that I've had in for a long time. So I'm quite excited to be doing that. So that'll be a bit more prepping and, and um, so forth. So I've got some filming to do. I've got some planning to do. It's all sort of manageable. If I just keep it plugging away at it, I find it's quite manageable because obviously I'm 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 it in this game. I'm I'm the artist. I'm the creator. I'm the filmmaker. I'm the Instagram person. I am my own PR network. I do the I do my website. You know I respond to people's comments and and emails. You know so I had to kind of just keep nudging it and juggling it along. And I try and keep it low key so it's not stressful because you know. I could be scanning gas certificates in an office somewhere, which is what I did do for a while, uh, part of my admin job that I did way back, and I try and keep it so that it's, it's actually joyful, and then I have lots of things that are fun to do to show you as well. So I'm going to show you next um, how I completed this sample, and we'll see where that gets us to, because it was rather fun to do, and I will look forward to seeing you again next week with something new and interesting, I hope. Okay, so this is the piece I've got now, a piece of stitch and tear underneath it. Um, other stabilisers obviously are available, but this is the one I like to use. And I've set my machine up for free machine embroidery. So I've got my darning foot or my embroidery foot on here. Mine is this see-through plastic one, so it doesn't really show up very well. I've also lowered the teeth under here, the feed dog teeth. And I'll stitch my. I'll put my stitch length to zero because I'm going to control that. I also reduce the top tension on my machine, but that's obviously personal to my machine. Um, so let us see what happens. The adventure continues. Oops. Now I need. I have to switch my little thing because it then 
um, means the fabric can move around. I've got a little switch under here. It's really useful. But I have been I have been repairing clothing, so there has been other uses of my machine over my little holiday. So right, let's get going, girls, and see what happens. I think it's going to be fun to do. It's another one of these things where I just have to go slowly and I'll have to take the pins out as I go. There's a pin under there actually. And the other thing is I've just put a neutral coloured thread in so I'm not doing anything exciting colour-wise with this. This very fine, delicate fabric is a little bit tangly. What I'm trying to keep is an essence of the texture of this. I don't particularly want it all flattened down. It's a bit naughty. I should really take the pins out before I stitch over them, but sometimes you can get away with it. But I don't recommend that. Not my hot tip. Take your pins out as you go. It's usually the best idea. Oops. And you can actually put a little bit more texture in by sort of scrunching your fabrics up as you go. So that's all held in place. Now what I can do now is I can do, go in and add more free machining to this where I would like to add more stitching I can do that but I think for now I'm going to stop there and I'm going to add the next bit on um, with this sort of straight bits that I want to add on because that's where I start and that's where I'm supposed to be going. Um, this is just really meant to be a background. But I have to say I'm rather loving it. Okay, so I'll stop there, otherwise I will keep going and going and we'll do the next little bit. Right, so there we go, that's it stitched down. You can see from the back it's not got a lot of stitching on it, but it's got some. You can also see my tension's not very good, but you know, I'm not really worried about that. Now what I've done is I've cut the these little things off, the uh, little tassely bits, but I don't... They've got a nice... Hmm, no, they're not quite what I want. They're a little bit too twirly for me. But I tell you what they do, if you untwizzle them, they would make a really nice sort of uh, spirally sort of effect. If I untwizzle, if I can just see if I can untwizzle that like this. They could be used for something else, I think. But I do like them. They could be little... There you go. Look at those. Aren't they fun? <laughs> no idea what I'd use them for, but they're really good fun. That's me. Experimentation is my game. So what I've got, actually, I've added into the mix. I've now got this creamy wool yarn and I have got the linen thread that I showed you. But I've also decided it needs some dark in the mix as well. So I've got this very beautiful greyish, dark grey, charcoal grey linen yarn as well. And I've got this funny old string that I found that I think belonged to my grandmother. I'm not quite sure about that one, it's a, quite a brownish colour, but I just thought it needs a little bit more than just those colours. And then I've also got a darker brown yarn, which I think helps helps make it sing a bit more. So all I'm going to do is I've cut some little strips of these and I'm just going to throw them on. I'm not really interested in what they look like. 
I'm interested in sort of the kind of finished overall effect by the time I've chucked a few of these on here. And I, again, I've no idea how I'm going to stitch them down, but this is all about just playing again, responding to what I started with and just seeing where that's going to take me. And it's taken me already on a very interesting journey, creating the background. And I think it's about not overdoing things too much. I think I might leave the brown in. Sometimes when I think, oh no, that doesn't go, that's the very time when you should leave something in because then it's like kind of um, not listening to the voice that says, oh no, that doesn't tone in nicely with that. It's about taking the sort of the more dangerous, risky thing, I think. So it's a bit random, it's a bit random, but it's just creating something out of nothing and getting me going. It's made me get my fabrics out. Yeah, I think that brown works. I think that's really nice. I'm not paying too much attention to them looking exactly like the, the picture that I had. I'd quite like them to be curvy. Um, and again, no idea how I'm going to stitch these down. Um, it's all very well doing this, isn't it? It's all very well cutting these out and throwing them on here. Um, I think a little bit more of the creamy stuff, a little bit. And the nice thing is you can just keep layering these up. Yeah, that's a little bit more like that, I think. Um, just keep putting them on till you, till you think it's enough. Just before it's too much, call it a day. There we go. So that's created um, a different sort of pattern going on on the top. As I say, I don't quite know how I'm going to sew that down, but we'll, I suppose I could put soluble fabric over the top. I suppose I could do that, but sometimes the thing is when you use soluble fabrics is they can kind of alter the background. So they might, because you're going to wet them to get rid of them, this is really random. I have not done anything quite so random for a long time and it's really nice because there's no control over it and it'll probably jump and run around as I try to stitch it down. But heck, this is what the game is afoot. You probably think I'm complimentary barkers. Barkers, barking, mad as a box of frogs, as we say in our house. But I tell you what, I'm having some nice fun with my fabrics. Right, I'm going to take that over to my sewing machine and see what happens next. So this is now back to my sewing machine. And what I've done so far is I've taken a dark thread and I've stitched very quickly over these little bits here, slowly but carefully, but quickly, relatively. And then what I'm doing is I'm sort of traveling across the piece by doing dark curvy lines so that I can then get to the next bits of dark yarn. And that's kind of holding down some of the lighter pieces as well. I've given myself a bit of a job here, I will be honest, but I'm just gonna see where it takes me. I could have literally just used the thread to stitch down and created those nice curvy lines, but I thought it'd be quite fun to try and do this with some yarn on top. And I may well just leave some of it not stitched down. I might just stitch down the dark bits and leave the other bits to do their own devices. Um, but we'll see. It's, as I say, it's a ex total experiment, this. Is it catching on something? There we go. So I'm just kind of going along the line of this, quite slowly, quite carefully. Get that pin out, I think. And I don't, because it's meant to be just a fairly quick process, this, I'm not worrying too much about where my lines go. So I'm kind of going down the grey linen there as well. And I think I probably will stitch down the white bits also. Oops, just get my fingers out of the way. Take the pin out a bit. Go the way and move that pin, I think. Take 
So I'm not worrying about being accurate to these um, shapes. I'm just letting the, the yarn's kind of taking its own, because it's quite soft, it's making its own lines. But again, that's, again, that's just letting go of the control over it, seeing what happens. You see, these are kind of sticking up a little bit, which I quite like. And I might just literally do some bits like that. So what I've decided to do with these cream, um, the cream wool is I'm just doing a zigzag stitch over it. So I've put a sort of a neutrally colour in and I'm just going to do a zigzag round it to hold it in place. Or at least I am when I've turned it onto a zigzag. <laughs> Let's move my threads out of the way a bit. Take the pin out. I quite like that and I think well what I could do actually now I've got these dark ones stitched down as I could zigzag over those as well um, but I'm not sure we'll just see so it's actually turned into a bit more of a complex surface than I kind of in initially intended but the important thing is the whole process was to get me going and that's what it's doing it's firing up my creative juices so I'm going to finish this off and then I'll show you it when it's all done to where I think it should be so who knew that when I looked out the window for inspiration and I just saw the willow herb dancing around, having seen, you know, the sample in my book from a previous experiment, that this would be what it'll turn into, that my little simple little drawings that I did would turn into such an interesting adventure. So I'll show you how it's turned out. I've stopped stitching it now because I could have gone on and on and I decided that I really wanted to leave some of the threads, some of these yarns that I've added on, I don't think you can see that, but I wanted to leave them so they weren't all stitched down. They've gone a little bit wiggly in places whereas it would have been nice to have just had curves but I've let go of control you see. I'll show you the back, you can see the zigzag stitching that I did. It's not got a huge amount of stitching. As I say, the whole idea of the exercise is that it's relatively quick and you try not to get bogged down in trying to make it into something. And it's quite hard to resist that as you're going along because you think, oh, well, I could just do this and I could just do that. You have to focus on this one thing, a small amount of fabric, small amount of yarns or whatever it is you're choosing to put on your surface. And I'm really chuffed with that. That's really created something very interesting and textural absolutely no idea where it might go. I mean, it could be something you would frame up, finish it off a bit more and frame it up. I've left the edges really raggedy, which I like. It's quite free and it's really just, it's got me going. It's got me going and I hope it might get you going too. You don't have to do it as complicated as this. Obviously, you can keep it really simple. I could have simply had a piece of calico. I could have literally just taken a piece of calico, perhaps put a bit of I don't know, lace or something on the top and then just done some stitching to respond to those pencil marks. But I feel the texture is always what I'm about. Again, I could have taken this into other colours. It could have been done with really bright colours and something stark to make the lines with, maybe even black. But I just was feeling, I'm feeling quite autumnal at the moment. I feel like my colours are changing back into sort of autumn shades at the moment as we're shifting into September and there's more brown in the hedgerows and things so I'm kind of feeling that. So anyway that's it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this and maybe it'll inspire you just to have a go at playing and seeing what comes out and I will look forward to seeing you again next week and we'll see what comes next because I again I have no idea what I'm going to do next week whether I'm going to build on this or whether I'm going to do something completely different. We'll see. Thanks again please subscribe, please share, please leave me a thumbs up, please leave me a comment if you'd like to. I'd love to hear what you have, what you think about what I do and any questions I'm happy to answer. And um, there we go. See you again soon.
Pa-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-pa-da-p